Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. In this video I'm going to make some upgrades to my Discus Aquarium. So you've seen this before if you've been here before. This is my custom aquarium display tank in my living room of my house. I recently did some work planting it out. Mm, plants are always difficult at the best of times with discus just purely because of the heat that they like. And I've not made things any easier by not having a proper planted substrate. So I've been looking at options to add CO2 um, over the past year or so. You've seen me try out different methods of CO2 with diffusers and the bell method. Um, but this time we're going to try a reactor. Um, full disclosure, I did try and do a DIY version but ran out of silicon and more importantly patience so I went out and bought one. This is a Sera. Sera. So for what it is, it's actually a very simple contraption. Um, you essentially have your water going in through the intake here with the CO2 having its own little valve here. The water pushes around a bunch of blades and which smash up the CO2 and start dissolving it into the water. The CO2 gathers at the top obviously. There's a tube that runs right from the bottom all the way to the top which is the outlet. So that water is absorbing the CO2 and when it gets down to the bottom it gets pulled up leaving the CO2 just at the top. So you, if you get a very effective way to put CO2 into your aquarium and you use less so you don't have to refill as much. So it's very well made, it's very sturdy, it's good thick strong plastic, good thick strong connections everywhere. And um, these are the, the little blades that spin around on top of the tube. Um, but it is a very simple thing and if you had a bit of patience you could probably make one very easily. I'm sure there are hundreds of videos out there telling you how to do that. But if you're a bit lazy like me and you just want to buy one, this seems like the most well reviewed. And if you stick around and click that subscribe button I'll tell you in a few months whether I think it's any good or not. So obviously it's designed that it can be used with uh, an external filter, a canister filter, or you can power it with its own pump. So I'm going to use a, a little pump. I've just got a little small one here. Um, that will sit in the sump, connected to this, and then on the output I've just got another pump here. I've just put a little elbow on there because sometimes when you have a... I'm trying to get it back down below to the same level and sometimes when you have too big a curve and with quite warm water I can end up getting a kink in there so I'll just put in that there all I need to do is heat up the ends pop them on there and we're good to go um, this is actually the Sarah 1000 um, it's for tanks that are more than 600 litres or very heavily planted um, I just got this because it was on offer at the time um, there is a smaller one for more manageable tank sizes, so choose the one that's appropriate. So whenever you've got some pipes to fit, plastic, PVC, whatever they might be, and the the end is the same size as the, the pipe you're trying to fit it to, good little, good little trip, good little tip, boiling water, just dip in the end of the hose, a couple of seconds, what that does is it lets the plastic expand enough and become flexible enough that it can stretch and then when you put it on whatever you're attaching it to and it cools down it contracts again and it forms a really good seal so you only need a few seconds this is the pump end, the in end Get that on there. Don't really need this locking nut piece because that will not be moving. And in fact, I can't even get the locking nut piece on. So I might just leave that off just now. But when we come back in a couple of minutes and that's cooled down a little bit, I won't be able to pull that off and form a really strong seal. So I'll do the same for this end, which is the return back into the sump. I'll dip that in the coat of the hot water. I'm 
Job done. Let's get it installed. So I'm thinking I'm going to install it in this heater chamber, the second last chamber. Have the, the pump and the reactor in here and have it outputting into here so as the water will be taken straight up and distributed straight away. Comes with this little mounting bracket element but I don't know if I'll actually need that. Um, also, we need to attach the CO2. That's it installed and it's running. I've got about one bubble per second at the moment because I'm going to start off slow. I have heard reports of people that have used this that they don't need one bubble per second. Um, or people that were using a ceramic diffuser at four bubbles per second can cut that by half to two. Um, so I'm going to start slow and ramp it up, keep an eye on the drop check and see what kind of levels we get to after a day or two. So far so good. The kind of flow rate of this pump is fairly high. Um, but like I say, it is meant to be attached to an external filter, so it should be able to handle that. You can see the water coming in here. It's getting spinning around in those um, little blades that it's got in. The CO2 is going in at the same point. All that's getting mixed into the water together, and then that water is getting taken down to the bottom and back out and getting pumped into this chamber. So it's meant to be 100% efficiency. I'm not meant to be losing anything at all. Um, so we'll see how we got on. Noise-wise, I can hear it. Um, let's see, with the door shut, it does sound like running water, but I'm sure there's some tweaking that can be done, but we'll come back to that later. So I've had it running for three or four days now with the new reactor. A couple of things that I've made conclusions on is I need the reactor bottle itself to be under the water, otherwise it's, it's just a little bit noisy. It's not massively noisy. If it was in the fish room, for instance, I probably wouldn't be able to hear it, but because this is the living room, I want it to be as quiet as possible. So I've got it under the water. You still need to keep it as upright as possible. It's a bit too tall, so I need to have it at a slight angle, but as long as that angle is not too bad, that seems to work okay. Uh, and the other thing I've noticed is I've got the bubble counter up here just so as I can keep an eye on things. But basically, I've gone for retaining the same, what's the word, same dilution of CO2. I'm now dosing at one bubble per minute, possibly two, it's very hard to tell, where I was dosing at five bubbles per minute to get the same concentration. So that's the start. So I've got the CO2 sorted, I've got the FERPs kind of sorted, I just need to get the lighting schedule perfect and then hopefully these plants will start to flourish rather than feeling a bit sorry for themselves. I've got quite a lot of new growth on these um, Anubias and things like that so hopefully that will continue and some of the old melt away can die off and be replaced by the new stuff. Um, but yeah a little bit of hair algae around. So it's a start, hopefully we'll get there soon. But thank you for joining me and if you haven't click that subscribe button uh, and you can follow along and see if we can get this looking really nice. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye!